Hey everyone, welcome back to Puchara Talks. And today we are going to secure network with Azure capabilities and best practices in this series. So let me share my screen and take you through the presentation that I have prepared. And let's learn something new today. All right, there are so many points, but don't worry, these will help us because network security could be defined as the process of protecting resources from unauthorized access or attack by applying controls to network traffic. The goal is to ensure that only legitimate traffic is allowed. Network connectivity is possible between resources located in Azure, between on-prem and Azure hosted resources, and to and from internet and Azure. In today's video, we are going to talk about the strategy or other best practices to secure network as per Azure capabilities. So the very first point that we have is we should have strong network controls in place. Because in Azure, we can have VM talking to each other inside the virtual network. VM can also connect to the devices on a different virtual networks. Internet or on-premises network, there are multiple ways we can have this connectivity established in, in any environment. Hence, for the visibility and better management, we should have the centralized management of core network functions like firewall, express route, virtual network, and subnet provisioning, etc. If you use a common set of management tools to monitor your network and the security of your network, you get clear visibility into both. So this is the first guidance to have a strong network controls in place in general. Let's go deep from second point, which is logical segment subnets, yes. Azure virtual networks are similar to LANs on your on-premises network, if you're new with the Azure, but I hope you're not because you know we are talking a lot on Azure from last two years. So the idea behind an Azure virtual network is that you create a network based on a single private IP address space on which you can place all your virtual machines, use a network security group to protect against unsolicited traffic into Azure subnets. Network security groups, we have already talked about many times, uh, but for the sake of this video, they are like simple stateful packet inspection devices that use the five tuple approach, just like a load balancer, source IP, source port, destination IP, destination port, and layer for protocol to create allow or deny rules for the traffic. And to simplify NSG rule management, we have application security group. Now, we should not, or rather we should not uh, assign allow rules with broad ranges of the IP addresses. Like you should not just simply allow 0.0.0.0 to you know, many IP addresses. We should be very specific when we are allowing some uh, or assigning allow rules in the NSGs. We should not have huge uh, address spaces uh, for the for the virtual network. We should segment uh, large address spaces into uh, subnets, which make sense logically for which we are going to deploy that subnet. Because uh, <clears throat> that's what the segmentation means, to be very frank, right? <laughs> we should create network access controls between subnets because by default, there are no network access controls between the subnets that you create on Azure Virtual Network. So by default, they are routes created, we call it system routes. So if you're happy with that, then, then it's okay. But usually we control our routing. We don't let the subnet talk to the subnet, right? So this particular point is in regards to that 
uh, perspective. And we should always avoid small virtual networks and subnets to ensure simplicity and flexibility. Because if you create small virtual network, you mind you you end up with so many, and it will create a huge complexity and prone to error. And we need to secure it. So most organization add more resources than initially planned. And relocating addresses is labor intensive. We all know that. Using small subnets adds limited security value and mapping NSGs to each subnet adds overhead. So define subnets broadly to ensure that you have flexibility for growth. It doesn't mean you simply create a single subnet with the entire address space. It simply means we should be wise enough so that our subnet is not that small and not that big. And it should be as per the workload, as per the logical segregation that we are trying to do, trying to achieve. All right, well, we are done with our two points, uh, like good guidance and the practices. Let's see what we have in the next slide. Wow, zero trust, yeah? Of course, of course, because perimeter-based networks operate on the assumption that all systems within the network can be trusted. But today's employees access their organization's resources from anywhere on a variety of devices and applications, which makes perimeter security controls irrelevant. Access control policies that focus only on who can access a resource are not good enough. To master the balance between security and productivity, security admins also need to factor in how a resource being accessed. See the difference? Not only the access, but how the resource is being accessed. Well, if you're with me, you know we are where we are going. Well, you can see on the slide though. Anyways, networks need to evolve from traditional defenses because networks might be vulnerable to breaches. An attacker can compromise a single endpoint within the trusted boundary and then quickly expand a foothold across the entire network. And they say it takes like 90 days to find out a breach, an average. Anyways, zero trust networks eliminate the concept of trust based on network location within a perimeter. Instead, zero trust architectures use device and user trust claims to get access to organizational data or resources. For new initiatives, adopt zero trust approaches that validate trust at the time of access. Give conditional access to resources based on device, identity, assurance, network location, and many more. Enable port access only after workflow approval. You can use just in time, just in time VM access in Microsoft Defender for Cloud to log down inbound traffic to your Azure VMs, reducing exposure to attacks while providing easy access to connect to VMs when needed. Grant temporary permission to perform privileged tasks, which prevents malicious or unauthorized users from gaining access after the permissions have expired. Access is granted only when user needs it. So we use just-in-time in Azure AD, privileged identity management, or in the third-party solution to grant permissions to perform privileged tasks. Now, of course, we did talk about a little bit about routing, but yes, when you put a virtual machine on your virtual network, the VM can connect to any other VM on the same virtual network, even if the other VMs are on different subnets by default. This is possible because a collection of system routes enabled by default and allows this type of communication. Although the default system routes are useful for many deployment scenarios, there are times when you want to customize the routing configuration for your deployments. You can configure the next hop address to reach specific destination and to create your own route and let it jump to some other IP address. That's your next hop. 
We recommend that you configure UDR or user-defined routes when you deploy a security appliance or a virtual network or do force tunneling wherever is the need with the UDRs. Yes, you need UDRs for the force tunneling as well. So <clears throat> let's come to firewalling. Well, NSGs we did talk about, but NSGs and UDR user-defined routing can provide a certain measure of network security at the network and transport layers of the OSI model. But in some situations you want to, or you need to enable security at high levels of the stack. In such situations, we, we recommend that you deploy virtual network security appliances or Azure Firewall uh, because these appliances or firewall, premium Azure firewall can deliver better security than what network level controls provide. Like there are, there are options like firewalling, IDs, IPs, vulnerability management, application control, network-based anomaly detection, web filtering, antivirus, botnet protection, there's so many, right? Then let's go to the next slide and find out what you got there. All right, now it's time to deploy perimeter networks for security zones. A perimeter network, we also know, we also know this as a DMZ, is a physical or logical network segment that provides an additional layer of security between your assets and the internet. Specialized network access control devices on the edge of a perimeter network allow only desired traffic into your virtual network. Perimeter networks are useful because you can focus, you can focus your network security, your network access control management. You can focus on monitoring, logging, and reporting on the devices at the edge of your virtual network. A perimeter Perimeter network is where you typically enable DDoS. Azure provides basic and standard. Basic is the free of cost, and for standard, you have to pay a good handsome amount. The network security devices sit also sit between the internet and your Azure virtual network and have an interface on both the networks in a perimeter network, you could say. Based on zero trust concept that we mentioned, uh, we recommend that you consider using perimeter network for all high security deployments to enhance the level of network security and access control for your Azure resources. You can use Azure or third-party solution to provide an additional layer of security between your asset and the internet, like NVAs or Azure Firewall. UDRs can help you there. All right, so now it's time to avoid exposure to the internet. Well, many organizations have chosen to be hybrid. And with hybrid IT comes connectivity to the different branches or rather on-premises. Well, cross-premises connectivity allows the company to connect its on-premises network to the Azure virtual networks. Two cross-premises connectivity solutions are available side to side, which is encrypted tunnel, but through internet and express route, which is your dedicated private line. All right, now, this dedicated private line, the location of your express route connection can affect its capacity, firewall capacity, scalability, reliability, and network uh, traffic visibility. You need to identify where to terminate the express route in existing network because you can terminate outside the firewall and you can terminate inside the firewall. Well, of course, inside the firewall is recommended because we recommend treat Azure as the nth data center. If you require visibility into your traffic, then you need to, of course, put it outside the firewall so that traffic should go through the firewall. So that's how you can, you can take care of this. And 
let's talk about disabling RDP or SSH access to the virtual machines. Because it's possible to reach Azure Virtual Machine by using this protocol. So these protocol enable the management uh, VMs from remote locations and are uh, standard in data center computing. We all know that. There's like nothing new. We need these management ports. The potential security problem with using these protocols over the internet is that attackers can use brute force techniques to gain access to Azure virtual machines. After the attackers gain access, they can use your VM as a launch point for compromising other machines on a virtual network or even attack network devices outside Azure. We recommend that you disable direct RDP and SSH access to your Azure virtual machines from the internet. After direct RDP SSH access from the internet is disabled, you have other options that you can uh, use to access these VMs like point to side VPN, side to side VPN, your direct private link or Azure Bastion. Yes, always prefer Azure Bastion. Okay, then we are here. Now we are securing our critical Azure service resources to our virtual networks only. We're gonna use Azure Private Link to access Azure Pass services like Azure Storage or SQL databases over a private endpoint, which will be in our virtual network, yes. Private endpoints allow us to secure our critical Azure service resources to only our virtual network. Traffic from, from our virtual network to the Azure service always remains on the Microsoft Azure Backbone Network. Exposing your virtual network to the public internet is no longer necessary to consume Azure Pass services. So wherever possible, go with private link. The next point is about encryption. Yes, encryption for all traffic connections, including between your virtual machines and between on-premises users and applications. We should have IPsec tunnel for such communications. We did talk about it, but from here, from the encryption perspective, limit access to critical data and application by policies like user policy or device identity or, or traffic filtering. We gotta use Defender. Yes, Defender for cloud uh, app for conditional access of the applications and Windows Defender on machines. We're gonna use real-time threat detection for on-premises traffic with the help of Microsoft Defender for endpoints. Well, with these, we are done with all, a lot of, lot of uh, guidance. And now one last. Don't completely block internet traffic from the resources in the spoke network subnets. Blocking traffic will prevent these resources from using Azure Pass services that rely on the public IP addresses such as VM diagnostic, uh, logging, downloading VM extensions and other functionality. Azure Diagnostics also requires that components can read and write to a storage account. So always, always verify that outbound internet traffic is forced tunnel correctly. If you're using a VPN connection, then uh, with, with routing and remote access service on an on-premise server, use a tool such as Wireshark. And with that, thank you for watching and you guys have a good day.